Are we live? Well, hello, everybody, and whoops, <laughs> welcome to another episode of Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies, the live video podcast for people who love to talk about movies as much as they love watching them. And uh, yeah, we got a, another great show for you tonight. It is a back-to-back -back product episode, corporate product episode. Of course, a couple weeks ago, Jim and I uh, took a look at... Uh, the other half of Barbie, Barba, uh, the other half of Barbenheimer, Barbie. And uh, tonight we're going to look at a Canadian product slash company thing with a different ending. And that is Blackberry. Um, yeah, really looking forward to this. But I think first we need to, I need to bring on my co-host with the most, the man, the myth, the legend, the Kubasa King of Winnipeg, <laughs> Mr. Jim Chaboyko, how are you, my friend? Good, although summer's going way too quickly. But other than that, I'm doing fine. <laughs> it is going, yeah. I Oof. I was out last, uh, or I was out this evening earlier, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it just felt, wow, like too, too soon, man, too yeah. soon. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, mm. still August, though. So, you know, yeah. enjoy the, these days here. And still, it's officially summer for another month, I believe. So yeah. there you go. Um, Jim, you mm -hmm. had mentioned in the digital green room before we got started that you had a mm -hmm. question or a comment or an observation um, yeah. regarding the strike that you wanted to talk about before we dove into this show. Um, yeah, and I'd be... I'd be interested in, in what others say about this as well. It's long been put that the promotion part of the movie uh, apparatus, the movie industry apparatus, is such an important part. And of course it is. Um, it's important to promote the movies, to get people talking about them, to get people excited about them. But because of the writer's strike, uh, none of the actors are, are, are doing any promotion for the movies. Uh, they're not on the talk shows. The talk shows aren't even around um, to have the actors on in the first place. And evidently, because of the uh, the the because of this, box office except for Barbenheimer is down across the board. The Blue Beetle did not very well. There's a few other movies. Strays did not very well. Uh, I was just getting a bit of an update before we started, and they're they're saying it's because of the publicity. I've never really been swayed by uh, interviews, you know, interviews with actors, interviews with directors. Uh, you know, I've never thought, I don't really want to see that. And I see them on Seth Meyers and think, oh, I'm going to go tomorrow. I was wondering what your take is on this. I would say that the, the, the heaviest weapon in the arsenal is the movie trailer for me. If I see a trailer that I think looks good, and we've all been distracted by them before and disappointed by uh, trailers uh, when they when it turns out the movie's not as good as the trailer. But I'd say the trailer is the, the biggest thing. I, I pretty much make up my mind if I'm going to see the movie before I see any promotion, aside from the trailer, about it. How about you? Where, where do you stand on that? I, you know, I would tend to agree with you, Jim. I was given kind of a, I don't know about really the, the talk show circuit. I... Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I suppose it adds some value, mm. you know, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Jim. I'm not a hundred, I'm not convinced that mm. that is the actual, the real driver of, um, uh, of attendance. I'm, I'm with you. It's the trailer. The trailer is what gets me excited. I think mm. the name here, actually, Jim, you know what? I'm going to going to give you a bit more nuanced of an answer now. Sure. I, I'm not 100 percent sure that the the star promoting a big money with a big marketing budget thing does much, if anything, to for the for the picture uh, mm -hmm. for its economic viability um 
I think a star and a star pushing a smaller project that doesn't have that big marketing push behind them with the trailer yeah. everywhere and, you know, the big Comic-Con splash and all that other earned media for the movie, mm. then I think it, it might actually add quite a bit of value. Um, mm. Where I think, though, and this is where I think stars being on talk shows, and, and it is a good excuse to be on a talk show when you've got something to talk about. Yeah. Um, you know, I've met stars. You've interviewed uh, talent. Mm -hmm. Some of them, the, some of them are not great conversationalists, or not great conversationalists in that venue. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe great raconteurs at a dinner party, but you know, not great on a talk show. <laughs> not yeah. great being interviewed by, you know, a a, 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 a reporter. Mm -hmm. Um. What I do think, though, and here's the marketing, is that as long as they're keeping their name in and people like that person, because in the end, it's what do people ask? What's the movie about? That's the trailer. Mm -hmm. You know, does it look cool? And who's in it? Yeah. And so I think it's incumbent upon talent, especially lead talent. Their job, in part, is to remain in the public's mind. So people mm -hmm. go, I want to see that movie because X is in it. Yeah. You know? Um, now, if we look at Barbenheimer, Barbie, the flick we just saw um, a few weeks ago, you know, I, I, part of it was Margot Robbie for me. I was like, I, I like the choices she makes. Yeah. I was interested because she was in it. It wasn't just the trailer. Oh, the trailer mm -hmm. looked kind of, you know, ridiculous and fun. Yeah. Um, I was I was in it, uh, you know, because of Margot Robbie, that choice. Yeah. Would I have needed her to sell it to me, though, later? No. Does that does that make sense? I know that's kind yeah, of saying yeah. both things, but I... No, I and I get your point about the smaller movie and 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 even just sort of a name recognition thing. I mean, people, despite everything, um, uh, all the information out there about movies, and and you know, I would say that uh, it, it sort of packs a big punch. Uh, you know, the 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 publicity that they do. Yeah. Famously, my mom went to the blind side with with a friend who was. Uh, ill uh or the uh, <laughs> uh bucket list the bucket list with a friend who is ill not knowing that the film was about uh, dying <laughs> so uh you know i was like mom how do you not how did you not know that but uh there's a lot of information out there already but i suspect there is uh, there is an inherent value b between uh hooking a, a star up with a picture and uh you know just sort of getting the word out the water cooler yeah. kind of thing too but i you know like for me i have never seen an interview and thought you know what maybe i will go see that it's it's usually i know what it's about and i've seen the trailer and, and you've made I've, your I've call sort of already made up my, yeah you know, yeah the star is but, never uh, saying anything they of course they they don't go on there and you know sorry talk there <laughs> the project yeah. they're promoting um yeah a couple of rehearsed anecdotes and uh yeah. you know that and then they thing, say so. you see it i'm really proud of the work the, yeah. all these people were wonderful to work with mm -hmm. uh, yeah they they don't uh, at no time have i ever gone oh well that's now that she's told me or he yeah. has said now I want to go. No, uh, it, it, I yeah. mean, it, yeah, if I'm into that talent, mm. I'm into that talent and I'm going to go. Um, and I enjoy that person reinforcing the decision I've already made. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. having said that, I'm, that's just my own opinion. I'd, I'd be curious to hear from others what well, they think, uh, that's you know, a, that kind of thing. Perfect segue. We've got, uh, Look at this, Jim. Uh, we got like I rehearsed. We got it. DMG in the house. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, uh, uh, Dragon Movie Guy is in our chat. Uh, DMG, would love to get your opinion on this. Uh, Jim was asking about um, 
you know, some folks have said, uh, made a comment that maybe one of the reasons ticket sales are down this summer overall and some mm-hmm. of these movies are just uh, out and out tanking is that the stars respecting the WGA strike or the the not the Writers Guild strike rules, but the SAG after strike rules aren't doing the late night talk show, the promotion circuit. They're not promoting the movies. Uh, both Jim and I are like, I don't know, kind of make up our mind. And we think most people make up their minds on the trailer. But love mm-hmm. to hear what you think. And we'll keep an eye out in the chat for that. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He does. He did catch it up of our conversation. This is a good one, Jim. Uh, the whole quote: "We had so much fun on set." Close quote. The death knell of whether it's a decent <laughs> film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I have been listen. I've been, Jim. I uh, uh, another creator in our space. Uh, certainly. Uh, more than uh, us and DMG and another hundred of us combined, uh, 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 Sean Chandler was talking to him the other day, and he was talking about Burn It Down, Hollywood, Burn It Down. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, Hollywood, uh, an L.A. reporter, has been working that beat for decades now and writing a book of just how awful it is. And I had flashbacks at times, Jim, as she's Uh telling me these anecdotes of my brief time in, like, the edge. (laughs) The the edge, the local contribution to the Hollywood machine. Uh, Talk about the edge of nowhere. Um, But, uh, yeah, I, you'll never, if you read that book, Jim, um, mm-hmm. what the heck? I want to get the right title. Give me a second here. Certainly, yeah, yeah. Accuracy, schmaccuracy. Ah, here we go. Burn it down, power, complicity, and a call for change in Hollywood. Written mm-hmm. by, of course, everything's going to take forever, but uh, <laughs> exactly. let's, uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I already bought it. <laughs> Burn it down, Maureen Ryan. Um, uh, strong, a uh, big recommend, Jim. Uh, and yeah, it will this conversation? And I've only really just started. I think I'm a chapter eight or nine, and already I'm like, oh, I feel sick. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just the, how the exploitation is throughout the whole thing, and they're all lying, and I don't mean in a bad way, but mm. the oh hey. <laughs> Okay, uh, DMD has quickly chimed in saying less talk shows mean less box, like less box office sales. Yeah, All yeah, right. and they they say that, and I and I just sort of wonder what the mechanism or the the, the proof is. Like I'm, I'm not I'm I don't think I'm right, but I, I just know how I respond to these yeah. things. I, I you know what I'd like to see the data. Mm-hmm. You know, like this isn't the only time when the writers went on strike back in oh seven oh eight or oh yeah. seven. Um, that shut down the big talk shows as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the stars weren't getting on. So it wasn't just sag after. Of course, there's other ways stars can promote their films. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, oh, it's kind of hilarious because, of course, well, that's why publicists were whining about it. They've kind of shut their mouth now because, you know, they still need access to these stars yeah. once it's all done. But you've mm-hmm. got uh, Deadline Hollywood that's pulling up the B stuff from interviews that were done months ago before <laughs> the block, the blackout or the blockade. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're, hey, let's look at all these people we didn't give two, sorry, two shits about. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> what is the li- what is the day in the life of the chief lighting technician? Tell us yeah. more. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. some of these, you know, below the line senior people, definitely creative, you know, additions to any uh, the success of any film. But uh, it it is entertaining watching Deadline Hollywood, Hollywood Reporter, Variety, kind of. Oh boy, a lot of our content really was us interviewing celebrities. Yeah, celebs, yep. mm-hmm. um, and talking about what they were talking about. Yeah, all right. 
That's I think that's a great question and maybe something worth uh, worth maybe talking about because we really have been with COVID, these mm-hmm. strikes now. Um, and, you know, I'd love to, you know, get uh, DMG's opinion. Maybe we get together in another show where we just talk about what, you know, our different ideas of what makes a show successful. Um, yeah. You know, on the business side and on the creative side. All mm-hmm. right. Um, with that out of the way, Jim, you did. And just a sec here, if I can find it. You had sent me a tweet, if memory serves. A tweet, a zeet, uh, mm. whatever the hell. Uh, a seat? <laughs> this is, this is the, the host click or something, or eat? Mm. I, I, <laughs> all right, where are we? And I wanted to talk about it because was for whatever reason, it was one of those things where it's like, what the, what the what? Um, oh, it was the blind side. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I don't think it was actually. Okay. I, you know what? I, it, it could have been actually stuff I'm going to bring up in the show later. So never mind. Sure. Apologies, okay. folks. Kind of went off on a tangent there. Uh, let's. It's summer. <laughs> you're, you know what, Jim? Thank you very much. You're absolutely right. It is summer, and let's let's get back to talking about this flick, the flick at hand. Uh, of course, mm-hmm. we are talking about the BlackBerry, kind of a bio, a corporate biopic, a product biopic, but mm-hmm. also the story of three individuals who really kind of started, I think you could argue, started the smartphone revolution mm-hmm. and and were perhaps uh, killed by it. Um, Jim, why don't you tell us, tell us who is in this flick, uh, who is in front and behind the camera on this one. Sure, yeah. So uh, behind the camera, it was uh, directed by uh, Matt Johnson, who's also in it as Doug, uh, the sort of the third uh, in, in the trifecta there. Uh, Glenn Howerton, who uh, many people might know from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia or AP Bio, stars as Jim ba- Balsillie. And uh, Jay Baruchel is uh, Mike Lazaridis. Uh, it also has... Uh, uh, old indie actor Martin Donovan, who I always enjoy seeing. Uh, it's got Carrie Elways, who's, uh, yeah, seems a little bit different these days, a little bit, uh, getting a little bit older there, like we all are. And uh, Saul Rubinek, uh, a couple good Canadian actors, uh, Saul Rubinek and the comedian Mark Critch, as uh, Gary Bettman, strangely enough. A bit of a, bit of a dude's movie. I wrote down just before we started businessmen talking because there's not very many women in it <laughs> no. uh but um yeah so that's that's sort of a the lowdown of of uh, a number of the the leads in it but uh, yeah the, the the big trio is howerton baruchel and johnson there yeah um i mean i guess uh what's his name snyder wrote uh save the cat Mm. would call this a rags to riches to rags story. Mm -hmm. Um, Although the rags they ended up with were in the hundreds of millions of dollars and and in one case uh, over north, well north of a billion. Yes, Um, yeah. Well north. So you can't really, so it's one of those things I sort of struggle with is it sort of has a tragic arc, Mm -hmm. but... Would you call it that? Um, I'd put yeah. a pin in that, and that's also sure. for uh, for DMG in the chat and anyone who also kind of uh, 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 any lurkers. Yeah, it looks like we got might have a couple of lurkers. I'm looking at the stats. Um, but before we do that, before we get into the spoiler zone, Jim, uh, mm-hmm. let me ask you this: Can you give me your, you know, see it or skip it take on uh, on BlackBerry? Sure. I would, you know, for me, it's a bit of a light see it. Uh, I, I was really, you know, the tomato meter scores are off the charts. Uh, it's good. 
Uh, we'll talk about some sort of tonal issues and some other things. But uh, yeah, I, I, I felt that um, it, it sort of started at 100 miles an hour and there, there were some dynamic issues. There weren't tons of places to go, but you know, we can get into it. I enjoyed it. I stuck with it to the, like I stuck with it to the end. Sounds like faint praise, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the what, entire what journey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But at the end, I thought mm, they could have probably balanced a few things a little better. Gotcha. Um, myself, I you know what, Jim, I'm going to give this a, a bit more of a solid see it, especially now that it's on yeah. video. Um, that great, that solid start really is solid, mm -hmm. and. I think it's nice to see a it's nice to see the story told mm -hmm. when usually the IT version and you know unlike say the crooked E a film I worked on Jim oh yes um, yeah. sure. uh, uh, regarding the Enron story and like some of these other things that are it's a tech story but it's mm. you know it's like these guys really did make something. They made a thing mm -hmm. that I used. <laughs> uh, yeah. And to, to chart this story that captured a real moment in time when all of a sudden all this stuff was becoming crazy exciting and mm -hmm. all kinds of ridiculous claims that were being made about, you know, Web 2.0 and... Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know, this is all part of the dot com bubble. And there's other Canadian companies that caught, caught up in it that just sort of disappeared. Nortel, Northern Telecom, yeah. which was yeah. a huge Canadian company that mm -hmm. also, you know, got, oh, we're going to mix with the big boys. And <laughs> where the hell is Nor Nortel now? Or yeah. Norcom or, you know, went yeah. through a million ch name changes. And then all of a sudden... Canadian great moved to the United States has been chopped up by. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think for me, I, I'm going to give it a, I give it a see it. You're going to, it's great on, although it's certainly made for the big screen, works really well on television. Mm -hmm. And I think Baruchel did a pretty solid job as, yeah. you know, like all, all these players did. Uh, Buddy mm -hmm. from, Oh, oh, Glenn Howard or Matt Johnson, Matt Johnson, um, mm -hmm. played, uh, Doug. Balsilli. Oh, Balsilli. uh, Glenn Howard Glenn Howard. Thank you from, uh, yeah. it's always Eating sunny in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah. I thought he was great. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm giving it a see it. Uh, sure. Is it the greatest thing to come out of Canada since well, the last Canadian movie you remember? No, but yeah, pretty solid. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing my Canadian soccer shirt, by the way, just as a as a as a thematic tie-in. Oh. So. <laughs> I am. Uh, I don't even have my original BlackBerry. I got nothing. No. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's. Now that we've done that, Jim. Sure. Let's. Uh, I think it's time. I think it's time. To get uh -oh, into here it comes the spoiler ear zone earmuffs if you haven't seen it <laughs> well your 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 smart laughter ass. echoed in a sinister manner with the <laughs> <laughs> caught the a there. little bit of that oh. yeah oh here i you mean the effect <laughs> 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 I'm trapped in a video game. <laughs> um, here, you know what? <laughs> I got all of the gizmos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. We are in the spoiler zone. Mm -hmm. I asked you at the beginning. I'll ask you again. Let's start with this. Sure. Is this a, is it a tragedy? Would you call this a tragedy? I mean, it depends where I know it's called a you... comedy. Yeah. Although, that's a reach. Yeah. Or the old the standby when I was young and starting to watch like, you know, slightly more sophisticated stuff. I'm like, Mom, what's a dramedy? You know, that kind of but it's not that it's not that. That's yeah. more like the white shadow and saying elsewhere and those kinds of things. But anyway, um blast from the past. Um but uh 
Yeah, I mean, you know, coming from the ego, it's a tragedy. Like if if that's the only benchmark yeah. that you have is is your own ego, what you're able to accomplish in any given lifetime, sure. If it's if it's your own uh, comfort and wealth uh, and white people problems, not so much, I would say. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's you know they they each get slapped uh, slapped about the face a bit career wise, I think, and and yeah. you know these things. This is probably the thing that they'll most be known for. Anything else after that, sort of. You know, uh, a coda or a denouement or, yeah. you know, epilogue or what have you. But uh, yeah, well, I would say from the ego point of view, you know, you had it and you lost it. Yeah. If you're judging it that way. Yeah. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think from a character perspective, it is a tragedy. You've mm -hmm. got, in a way, three individuals who at the beginning, you kind mm. of see they actually really do need each other. Um, mm -hmm. It's a weird line, but I think it works given who the characters are, the uh, the two partners. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, and Mike. that whole, you know, who's afraid of sharks, pirates, because they're getting yeah. screwed by U.S. robotics. I wrote that robotics line down and, Yeah. You know, and it's a great line, uh, mm -hmm. again, in context. Um, and it's the first, and it's about, it's half an hour in, Belsilly realizes he, I mean, he's the one, he's the shark, he's the prick who you're like, you're ready to hate on until he gets to research emotion and mm -hmm. finds out how doomed they are. He doesn't, mm -hmm. and he's out $125,000 of his own mm -hmm. money and He's like, all right, I'm going to kick some ass. And all of a sudden, briefly, you're on his side. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yell at them. They're all morons who should be grateful a grown-up is there to yeah. clean up their mess. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. And so you see these three guys and how important they are to each other. But it's... It's also... It's in the... Therein lies the seeds of their destruction. Yeah, yeah, no, it it, it is interesting, and and uh, yeah, the for for me, I, I think one of the, the the problems that I did have with it, and it's not that uh, Howerton's, uh like I, I thought he was a you know his presence comes in, and yeah, absolutely, he's he's totally needed because hey, these guys are Jim. We've got a. We've we've got a trash talker in the chat. Uh oh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Perhaps a homophobic one. Uh, somebody has a problem with uh, with uh, uh, with with their perhaps oh my God. how they're feeling in the pants. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> agent K Wavy. <laughs> no, he's an actual agent. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh my goodness. Well. Anyway, Agent K. Wavy, I, you know, there's, we're not going to be able to, given that we're not, we're not mental health professionals, we are not going to be able to assist you in any mm. way. But uh, we can, um, you know what, there is something we can do. And just give me a second here. Sure. Bear with me. Oh, I might actually have to, I might have to do this over here. Okay, come on, come on. There we are. All right. We'll just do that. And that. And that. And that just, uh, I'll just, uh, let's just uh, take, care take care of this individual. There you go. An actual agent. <laughs> I love Ooh, how they have. Yeah, that's when funny. They have, <laughs> Good one, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. When they have an actual title in their username, I'm like, well, what do you think? Okay. Judge what? Right. Anyway. Uh, you know what? Uh, on this show, we're certainly not going to tell you, you know, how you should uh, feel about uh, LGBTQ 
uh, and two-spirited uh, and trans folks. Uh, but you know what? You're going to share that uh, kind of nonsense here. We're going to we're going to turf you out. Uh, yeah. You know what? Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> You've had your troll experience. Move yeah. along. Homophobic bigot. Um, it's like Twitter in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you guys married? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's where we're on split screens there, Agent. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, with uh, the Howerton character, and yeah, absolutely needed. For me, it, it's almost like um, sort of... Um, it, I, do, I was sort of thinking it was along the lines of an abusive relationship, not to trivialize abusive relationships, yeah. but usually there's a, like a charm offensive to start off with. Yeah. And it just comes in. He comes in and he's angry immediately. And I think the in way he media played this... res for all of them. Yeah. You yeah. know, the two part, like, uh, oh, I got to, I got to keep, stop referring to them as the two partners. <laughs> yeah. Doug and Mike. <laughs> they have <laughs> names. <laughs> Freighton and uh, Lazaridis. But, yeah. Y- you know, I, and I was thinking about this afterwards, and it's kind of interesting because a lot of people and would thanks play. For, uh, thanks to IMDb, Jim. I gotta, no. I gotta show this. If you look at IMDb, how do they describe everyone with their first names? Oh, That's go. just oh, yeah. fucking Jim. great. Whoops, sorry. And, and the two women That's that are just in it. great. <laughs> All right. Anyway, where, where where the hell were we? Okay. <laughs> Let's get this. There we are. Lazaridis and Fragan. Thank you. Okay. So, Sorry, Jim. So, yeah, no, no. Uh, so, basically, uh, after watching it, I thought I sort of... Now, most people would play uh, Balsily with a little bit of a wink, right? And the, the, you know, they would say, well, I'm not this bad, really. Or, yeah. But he's just... All in, yep. I sort of likened likened him to um, um, Robert Patrick's uh, Terminator in the uh, second Terminator mm. movie. Like, it, there's just no. It's almost like in a robotic anger. I know that's contradictory, but it's like I hear like, what you're saying. Yeah, you know, like it's a malicious uh, presence that he has, and there's no winking. There's no like, mm, you know, I, this is just a thing that I do. This is just a character I play. You know, he's bashing phones and that sort of thing. So when you start off with l- like that, to me, it's like one of those Eminem songs that just is like immediately out of the gate. And there's not a lot of places for it to go in a story sense of the way. So it's, I'm not criticizing the portrayal. It's just the, the way it's written. I, I, I think the character of Lazaridis we're already shown his code. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> uh, we're, we're already sh- shown what, what from the start, what sets him off, what appeals to him, that sort of thing. When, when there's a, an intercom that's buzzing and he goes to fix it before their big meeting. Uh, the meeting and, that and, he, they need to be successful to save yes. the company because he a has huge spent distraction. all their money. Yeah, they are yeah. bouncing payroll checks. Yeah. And yet he's still sort of distracted by that. So yeah. anyway, uh, but Howardin comes in, uh, or Howardin's Balsillie comes in, and he's just immediately out of the gate. He's like a like a rage, uh, you know, a wrecking sort of ball. A, a wrecking ball, yeah. yeah. And and so there's not a lot of dynamics. Like there's not a lot of places for him to go. It's just like let him loose and see what happens. And that's sort of the tone of it. And I sort of would have liked a little bit. You know, I know it's based on a true story or, or what have you, but Inspired apparently by. the the Fragan character they didn't even know much about him, so they had to make a lot of it up. So I mean, it's again not a documentary, uh, as we've claimed, as as we've stated with other movies, uh, based on a true story. So that that's <laughs> one of my that was inspired by <laughs> loose, very loosely inspired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, but I, I, I thought the Mike Lazaridis character, Jay Baruchel, was, I, there was a lot, I mean, you knew what was going on and there'd be little code words like made in China, you know, things that would set him off uh, that, 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 you know, are peppered throughout the entire movie. And they, they give you a good sense of uh, uh, where, where it's going. So the uh, f- folks on the screen there is the uh, actual book that the film is technically based on uh, <laughs> losing the signal the untold yeah. story behind the extraordinary rise and spectacular fall of blackberry uh written by jackie mcnish and so- sean silkoff uh find it on amazon or where better books are sold 
It did. The movie did make me want to read the book, though. I have to say, that's yeah. if, if anything going for it. I, you know, I thought, mm, yeah, that might be an interesting read. Let me ask you this, Jim. You know, just kind of move it, digging a little deeper into yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, it's not a historical, although it gets some of the main beats. Mm. Well, Silly really did try and buy the the Pittsburgh Penguins. And there was a, I'll move it to Hamilton, <laughs> you know. Um, Hamilton Penguins. Yeah, the uh, Fagan did bail out early. Well, he was kind of pushed out, sold, cashed in his chips mm-hmm. at a high. <laughs> um, that said, um, did you, what did you think of the historic vibe of it? Like, did you feel like it was uh, a, a kind of a, a period piece moving closer and closer, but never quite catching up with our time now. Yeah. I mean, they tried to set that up with a little bit with the, the soundtrack and they mm-hmm. probably went a mm, tiny bit early. I mean, it was a little bit, I mean, they did have uh, uh love will tear us apart by joy division, which, which is kind of an interesting choice because they played it as uh, uh Howerton's uh, bell. Silly was pulling into the lot one day and he, I think he was blasting it from his car or something like that. But his um, beamer, like, yeah, like very it's, late eighties, early nineties. Yuppie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and some of the music choices were a little bit, again, one of my bugaboos, a little bit obvious without having a real direct uh, connection to what was going on in the mm. screen. I mean, they threw Cannonball in there, the Strokes, and a few, I like songs I like and I like to hear, but that may, you know, you may have made some other choices. I recently watched Royal Tenenbaums and man, my uh, my man, uh, Wes Anderson knows knows how to pick a tune to fit the moment, yeah. uh, not just for the cachet of it's, uh, is, you know, being a past hit. And but he anyway. doesn't hit it as, he picks his moment to get the hit. Yeah. To yeah. get the emotional hit. Otherwise, all of a sudden, the the soundtrack will pull back again. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I guess it was, yeah. Uh, it, it's a tricky thing where it's not, you know, Oop, Jim's cutting out a little. Mr. Uh, Jaboyko. Oh, we got you, you back. Say that again. <laughs> we yeah, you cut it, out a bit there. Sure. It's it's a tricky thing to maybe go back 20 years as opposed to going back 50 years, I think. Um, where thing, you know, the, the, the changes are a lot more obvious. Uh, I would be a horrible continuity person, I think. I would fret <laughs> about everything. But um, yeah, no, I I, I, get, I suppose it does a fairly fairly good job. Uh, the hairstyles change, uh, but uh, that might might have been uh, yeah, well. Howerton's uh, Balsillie is bald. Uh, the the one who's changes the most is uh, is uh, Jay Baruchel gets a better wig <laughs> as the movie goes on. Um, better, m- more well quaffed, and then you know Matt Johnson's Frag and <laughs> Doug Frag and just. Just has the has the headband, the ever present headband, and the, the the sort of the shaggy hair. So, I mean, yeah, I guess it does a does an okay job of that. Uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't sort of uh, approaching it like a, a period piece uh, myself. Mm. But uh, is there anything that stuck out for you? Like, did you think it did well, a good job? I, or? I really enjoyed, uh, especially the opening sequence or the credit sequence. I really enjoyed that, and I loved the way. I, I was taken back to the nineties and the, mm. like, I mean, I, some of this stuff, I'm like, I was worked at CompuCenter peddling Oof. early personal computers in a mall mm-hmm. and, you know, U S robotics modems and all yeah. that stuff. So I was, I was taken back, especially that TV vibe it had that TV. Uh, yeah. Pre, Pre flat screen, pre streaming, uh, television feel to it all. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed, and unlike you, I, I, I was, I'm a little less discerning when it comes to the soundtrack. And so the earlier hits were, you know, I was, I was, a, I was down with it. Um, yeah, yeah. But I do think, and and yeah, I think I think it kind of understood that it was a period piece. Mm-hmm. Um. 
I I do, you know, once you say it, Jim, so I was like asking about the music. Once you say it, it's like, yeah, no, you got a point there. Uh, you know, it's rare that we've looked at a movie where we're both kind of like, wow, that was perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do want to quick shout out to DMG. <laughs> It says, if any celebrity was going to move an NHL team to Hamilton, shouldn't have been Lynn manuel Miranda. <laughs> yeah, this could come oh, that right. Hamilton. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. What am I... Why oh, am yeah. I wasting time? We actually have... Uh... I, I have... Yeah, I, I was actually thinking Brian would bring out some Hamilton personality out of his hat there, but uh, I'm like, how much does he know about Hamilton? But uh, yeah. yeah, anyway, that she, uh, was she good. the cops. I don't know, but um, uh, here's something I wanted. Okay, what do you think the uh, what do you think, buddy? What's his name again? Uh, what do you think Matt Johnson is saying about? Um, what do you think he's saying with this movie? You know, in, in several different ways, I, I, I think it's a cautionary tale about, uh, you know, on several levels, uh, about success, about overconfidence, about, uh, you know, ego. underconfidence, uh, ego. Yeah. And I, and I think it's a, I think it, that's the easy answer. Cautionary tale. Um, but, uh, and also, you know, uh, things move, whether he meant this or not, but things move rapidly in, in these, uh, these sectors. I mean, they were on top of the, the heap for, uh, I don't know how many years ultimately, but it, it ended pretty, even from my own memory, I never had a Blackberry, uh, mm -hmm. unlike you, but, uh, um, yeah, it seemed to end pretty, pretty quickly there. It was relatively speaking overnight that's a, you know mm. what it was a number of canadian commenters and this is the tweet you had sent me jim mm. um here i'm 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 gonna bring i'm gonna i, I want to pull it up let's let's pull it up here folks uh you had sent me a tweet uh some canadian commenters regarding uh regarding Blackberry. Oh, yes. And uh, so here is, so we've got it up on the screen now. And then. Um, oh, that's what I remember. That so now, yeah. this individual relating to um, some not in my backyard nonsense in Toronto uh, says a lot of Canada, too rich, too comfortable, too insulated, too smug. You know, it'll be the downfall of this country as it affects so much. Um, and uh, somebody jumps in and says, that's exactly how BlackBerry, formerly known as RIM, Research in Motion, failed. They laughed at the iPhone with their newest software engineer was showing them. When their newest software engineer was showing them one he was using with joy in the States. And it's mm. like, yeah, I, you know, that's it. I don't think that's an accurate anecdote. But even if it was, I, you know what? That's I, I, I find it entertaining that there are this desperate need to, you know, nationalize it. Like, I mean, it was a Canadian success story and then mm -hmm. a Canadian failure, much mm -hmm. like Blockbuster was an American success story who, you know, allegedly laughed, laughed in Netflix's face. Yeah. But I, I'm i wondering, you know, what it says, is this a commentary on, not that that's what Matt Johnson was trying to do. He's telling a mm -hmm. Canadian story, and I think unselfconsciously. You know, yeah. it didn't, even though CBC was <laughs> one of the players, heck, every Canadian funder, that could possibly give it a nickel had given it mm -hmm. a nickel. Um, but it didn't feel like that self-conscious thing that you and I have, you know, talked about mm. when covering other Canadian films. Um, this one also didn't have that feel for it. 
like it was boostering or it was just shamelessly knocking. It was just telling a, a story about this thing mm. that was in Canada. Um, yeah. But some of the commentary, like this individual online, it's like, what, what you know, really? <laughs> Were you? <laughs> you yeah. know, they did manage to make a thing that was incredibly successful for a number of years, oh, up yeah. to and including an American president who's, you know, who's bummed that they took his BlackBerry from him. That was yeah. in 08. They're like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, well, we'll, we'll give you back a... <laughs> you don't need a phone anymore. You have people for that. Yeah. And that is, I think, like what some people might miss is that it really was a, a cultural force. It had its moment in the sun, and mm -hmm. while Johnson is definitely has created, you know, a, 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 a perfectly fine character study, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it also shouldn't take away from the fact or it should encourage people to kind of look and say, yeah, you know what? This thing really was a thing for a while. Yeah. yeah. And then wasn't like so many other inventions. They come, they have their moment in the sun, and then they go. Because somebody else makes something that may not be better or worse. It's different, and it captures what consumers wanted then. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if I was to criticize Research in Motion, is it didn't realize that its future was in becoming a consumer good. Apple always understood. It's like, yeah, we're, we, we might sell that we're a high-tech company, but mm -hmm. at their heart of hearts, they know, no, we're, we're a consumer electronics company. And so mm -hmm. we, we, they thought that way, whereas, you know, research emotion was, well, no, we're a big business high tech thing and this is what we do. And it's like, I don't know. Remember all those pearls that were around? Yeah, you had, either had the grown up Blackberry because that's what your company did or, you know, mm -hmm. I worked for the city at the time. That's when I got my black. Oh, is that why? Yeah. Okay, but yeah. you, yeah. you know, or you had the Pearl, which was mm. super popular, like yeah. crazy popular. Um, yeah, until the iPhone basically said, you know, this is a consumer good, you know. Mm -hmm. Whereas the BlackBerry was never, you know, and yeah, they mismanage that, but a lot of companies do. Some survive, some don't. I'm it's kind of rambling here, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, well, yeah, it, you know, and there lies almost every company. You know, how many of us had Ataris in our basement? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, or or on the downstairs TV set for you know throughout our childhood. The and, Atari and, uh, ST was a competitive machine for a while. Oh, and, know, and uh, you know, I know to the, the Mac and Commodore. You know, the Commodore yeah. Amiga, the Commodore Pet, the Commodore 64, Commodore. which for yeah. years was the, still the most successful individual sales machine. Yeah. Like, for years. They say about hockey coaches, they're hired to be fired. And, you know, it's sort of the <laughs> same way with tech. You know, you're, you're hired to eventually mm -hmm. become, or you're bought to eventually become obsolete. Yeah. Not, you know, in such a direct yeah. line, but sort of in, in metaphorical essence. Yeah. yeah. I but, mean, uh, and that's actually one of the the points about this movie. Another one that that I sort of um, thought might have been an, a better inclusion is that you, with this one, they have very they they do show success and they do show celebration a little bit, but other than that, it's pretty much jumping from from house fire to house fire, like they're crisis constantly, to crisis, crisis yeah. to crisis, and and you never get a sense. You see it. In the, 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 you see it in Lazaridis in his clothing, his change of hairstyle, and yeah. that gold watch does a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, they, they, they show his <laughs> gold watch a, a lot. Point. Yeah. And, and you almost never see any kind of, and I would have liked to, and they, they throw you a couple bones, but there's never any sense that, ah, it, it, you know, we've made it. It's just, it goes from angry point to angry point to, you know, like, to crisis to crisis to crisis and bell silly lose it, it loses it again and you know mike lazaridis has to scramble for an answer and that kind of thing so i you know and i get it i get that that's drama but it would have been you know the balance there would have been yeah interesting. If, if there's a 
it, it's kind of uh, there's a a a, a, tri- a peak a rags rags at the mm-hmm. top is the riches where you see you have a moment to see the pride that's going before the fall and mm-hmm. we didn't really we weren't given that mm-hmm. we weren't given that opportunity where they're celebrating but you see already the <clears throat> the weaknesses the you know what what comes after hubris nemesis <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, where are the furies? Um, yeah, no, you're right. Um, yeah. Let me ask you this. Okay, so Belsili's character starts mm-hmm. as a total prick. And you are. You're like, oh, run screaming from this lion. Yeah. You know, this lion <laughs> hole. <laughs> Just run. If there was, was there any moment... And when was it that you're like, actually, I kind of like this guy. He's right for them. Well, almost immediately, like within the first five or ten minutes, I thought, are, are we going to be able to withstand uh, <laughs> this much Jim Bell silly? Because he comes in sort of, you know, comes in hot, yeah. as they as they say in the recording in the broadcasting uh, business. But he comes in pretty hot, and I and I thought, uh oh, if they don't temper this, it might be it might. And you know me, another thing that I don't like is when, when one character takes over an entire movie. Uh, and he didn't. I, I felt that he didn't yeah. take it over. But there could have been a little more. Uh, uh, no, I, I, you know, I saw him. I just wrote down, and I meant to mention it earlier. He's basically angry Aragorn. <laughs> he's angry business Aragorn. <laughs> like, you have all these lost little hobbits, and they're all like, we, we like movie night. You heard and it he here, comes folks. In... <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Angry yep. Aragorn. <laughs> Like, yay, movie night, yay. And then uh, he comes and he's like, what is this crap? And um, Get off your ass. we got a long yeah. way to Mordor. And get <laughs> some, you know, you. some, uh, I wouldn't say tough love, probably more like tough hate. But anyway, he, uh, he, he sort of whips him into shape. And, you know, immediately you know that he's. Kind of shows ro- where he comes from. Your logo is yeah. literally SS. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, but. Um, so yeah, immediately you recognize his worth to the company, and and yeah. you know, like I said, it, 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 recognizing his value, I think, is is more important than for, to me than no. his value in the scheme of things and in the story uh, to me than his likability. Because I didn't, know, I had a suspicion earlier on that he wouldn't be at all likable. So yeah, uh, well, yeah. I I for me. Yeah, it, you're like, oh, yeah, this is a rat fink. Uh, or not a mm-hmm. rat. This is a bastard. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I am impressed with, like I said, about the 30-minute mark when he realizes just how effed he is. Mm-hmm. What does he do? He goes, hires an assistant, says to everyone, you're going to get paid. You're going to get paid from this person. Oh, yes, yeah. Because he's obviously his second mortgage on his house to mm-hmm. keep the thing afloat. He sticks with them. He does the heavy lifting. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you're like, you know, got am angry Aragorn. Kick those hobbits' asses. <laughs> yeah. And Get you sort of see, it's like, yeah, this is what they need. Mm-hmm. You know, and you're like, OK. And so there's that point where he's, yeah, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm going to ignore you and I need a prototype. And Jay Baruchel's, uh, 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 you, oh, I'm going to keep mispronouncing his name. Uh Lazaridis. Uh, Lazaridis. His, you know, and it's like, I need a prototype. And I'm I'm screaming at the television. Make a just put the box together. You fixed mm. his. You fixed his intercom because it was bugging you. Mm. Make the gizmo you've designed. Quit. Yeah. <laughs> quit Uh-oh. around with his telephone. Oh, I can fix this. It's like, geez, Louise. And and yeah. I enjoyed that. And that kind of owned me for the rest of the film. Where you mm. see where they're all, but they're all important, you uh-huh. know, that, and in so many of these business partnerships, 
Like this isn't just a movie with Shakespearean elements. It's also the story of a, a zillion business partnerships where mm -hmm. each business partner sort of misses the point of the other partner. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, doesn't realize it's like, no, we we got this shark because we're in amongst pirates who are out to out to screw us. Mm -hmm. it, while at the same time, you know, saying, hey, pirate or shark, back off. I am the guy who's going to come up with the idea to get us out of this jam. Quit mm -hmm. promising things. I'm telling you, I cannot deliver. And then mm -hmm. the other, you know, that they all, that they were all important and that because they didn't value that, you know, or value it enough or mm -hmm. put that front and center, that's what kills, kills a partnership, but does make for a great tragic ending. Um, yeah. One more, uh, well, actually, you know what? Uh, first of all, let's take a quick, quick look at the uh, chat. Sure. Uh, it's a... Um, <laughs> DMG, it's like uh, apparently I'll be here all week, folks. Enjoy the veal. Um, <laughs> I wonder if I can rent an HD DVD copy of Blackberry at Blockbuster. Um, Watch it everyone. on your iPhone. Okay, Jim. You know what? I, I that's oh Jelly Duck one hundred. Oh hey. What do you get to when you eat a blackberry? A Bluetooth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> we do have, you know what? It's 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 tiny yet mighty. The Jim and Rob over analyze movies live chat. Still yes. the best chat on the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> great to see you, Jelly Duck, and a great singer. Uh, move up uh, above for uh, uh, DMG had a couple. All right, um, Jim, Mr. Chmoiko, mm -hmm. let's, uh, whoops, no, final thoughts. Let's talk about final thoughts. Um, and I wanted to ask you this, Jim. Do you think that, like, in some ways, I kind of thought, I, I, all I did is I wrote down hardball, you know, as they were describing how they were getting screwed by U.S. robotics. Yeah. And, so, and this was also the same time that Microsoft, and everyone may think uh, Buddy from uh, Bill Gates is a nice guy. Okay. Not a nice guy. Not a good guy at all. Even his charity is about grinding poor countries to accept terrible patent law. Um, but this was the same time when we're finding out just what, a, uh, what, let's uh, make sure I got my uh, button ready, what miserable <laughs> Microsoft were when, when they were dealing, when they were pushing, uh, uh, pushing Netscape Navigator, the first really great browser, basically out of business. Mm -hmm. You know, the same time. And all I could think of is, you know, is, is there a missed opportunity here that it really could have been a, a movie about, you know, American business hardball? Yeah, I mean, like we love these good... narratives. I'm thinking mm -hmm. of the Nike Air where it's it's about character and believing and all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, this movie at least gave you a hint of maybe it isn't. Somebody mentioned, too, other kind of entrepreneurial films uh, that have been released this year. And we have. Yeah, we've done a number of them. We've done Air. Uh, we reviewed Air and we talked about Tetris, uh, yep. which is mm, something similar. Um, Had a yeah, bit of that I... cutthroat, but really still about the, hu the human spirit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they did have a, a little a, a little bit of the hardball with uh, Carrie Elwes, uh, Carl Yankowski character and that sort of thing i mean could they have gone in deeper maybe yeah i mean the, there was well, a lot i think i think they on. had at the beginning had yeah. it you know with yankowski um yeah like in some ways better than other films like I, i'm thinking yeah. you, talking years back tucker oh yes yeah. tucker uh oh 
oh, part of Jeff Bridges, Jeff Bridges. Uh, 90s. Yeah. I think 90s. Where, uh, uh, like the, the narrative is the good entrepreneur ruined by the by big business. Yeah. You know, run out of business by big business. Um, hey, you could call the fountainhead. <laughs> but the fountainhead would be another one of those, you know, the evils of big business. And of course, there's communist toadies in government. Um, because <laughs> Anne Rand makes no sense, really. Um, but I, I thought, you know, maybe a little bit more of that, like just not and not without making any moral judgments. That this mm -hmm. is everyone's fighting to survive, yeah. and no matter how many billions they have, they all think they're about to die, you know. In a way, Putting going back food to what you're talking table. about with the strike, <laughs> you know, you got thousands now at the verge of being in the poorhouse, so mm -hmm. that you know a couple of dozen true Rockefellers can keep duking it out with each other on who's got the, I have a, you got a 50,000 square foot, super high tech, you know, evil layer mansion mm. island thing. I've got two of them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Two years after COVID said, look, the art saved us all, saved all our sanity, you know, and now they're all out of work. But uh, uh, this is going to drive you insane. Tucker, 1988. Yeah, Tucker, the man in his dream. DMG was in the Ooh. chat, and uh, he's wondering if we're going to uh, <laughs> business biopics. Flaming Hot coming up on next week's Jim and Rob. <laughs> well, I'll just have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> so well. Stay tuned. This is mm -hmm. actually a perfect time to uh, hit that uh, like and subscribe, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, yeah, sure, don't forget really to ring microphone. that bell. Get notified on what we will be watching. And, of course, folks, you've noticed our uh, summer programming has been a little less uh, consistent. Uh, mm. We will, as uh, once we get in, once we get out of summer, uh, Jim, you're headed, you're headed uh, on another wonderful uh, adventure yes, soon, am. aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to catch some shows where actors are still working in uh, the Big Apple. Uh, <laughs> little shortly, Broadway? So little Broadway action? Little Broadway, yeah. Maybe uh, uh, see that Hamilton that everyone's speaking of. <laughs> that, that newfangled uh, play <laughs> yeah. with the rapping. Uh, we might, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I'm actually going to see Robert Shaw's uh, son's play about the making of Jaws. I already oh, have really? tickets, so I'm, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, oh, that'll be broken. great. Yeah, I'm super excited about that. So, uh, and that was just accident. It literally just started three weeks ago. So it happens to be uh, when we're going to be there. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's coming up. Excellent. And yeah, so after that, yeah, we'll be a yeah, little bit we'll more get regular, back but, a bit uh, more on track. And uh, of course, yeah. uh, love to get uh, uh, DMG back on the show. Uh, just got to fi figure out that right timing and everything. Uh, but love to get him back on live with us. Mm -hmm. um, talking about some uh, fun stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, but folks, uh, we will we will get back to a regular schedule. The next flick, not 100% sure on. The next date, not 100% sure on. But we do got a couple of videos where I will, and I'm kind of caught, Jim. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. we can get a comment from, uh, from the chat. I, I'm either, uh, how do I put this? I'm either going to call it, uh, oh, for f sakes, with Rob, as mm -hmm. I rant about a couple of subjects, or uh, maybe maybe it's a uh, get your head out of your <laughs> with Rob, and where I again I rant on a couple of subjects, film and film business related. Yeah, yeah. What do you? What do you, Which one do you like? And remember, uh, folks, that's oh f sakes <laughs> with Rob, my, uh... or. <laughs> Whoops. Get your head Get your head out of your That's the one. Uh, I, my write-in ballot is for Bill Needle's mailbag, but... Uh, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I like FFS is a good one, but uh, nice and... And, DMG and you can abbreviate wants it. to do our Rotten Tomatoes ranking, but oh, ranking things that are under 50%. 
Oh. <laughs> or 40 percent. I don't think we 100 percent agreed on the numbers, yeah. but uh, DMG, he's already got his list and it's all bottom oh of the barrel God. stuff that he enjoys, like okay. low scores he loves yeah. or maybe lo- loves a little strong. Uh, but, uh, you know, ones where we're still, you know, I enjoy that. I'll watch nothing that again. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. All right, uh, folks. Uh, yeah. Thank you all very much mm-hmm. uh, for attending. Of course, somewhere down here, you can uh, hit that subscribe button. Whoops. Over there be videos that you could watch. And uh, yeah, thanks, DMG. Thanks, Ahmed, uh, Jelly Duck 100. Uh, good night, everybody. Remember, it's never just guys. a movie.